narcolepsy is something which I've been interested in for many years, actually, largely because there are patients um, with autoimmune disorders, which we know are caused by antibodies, who have sleep disorders. Um, not narcolepsy, typically, but they have insomnia or um, hypersomnia, movement disorders at night, that kind of thing. So it seemed obvious to try and um, become interested in narcolepsy, which has been is actually the best known HLA associated disease until quite recently. So it had been known to have this HLA association, which means that it's almost certainly caused by some genetic association with the immune system. And that's been known for about 30, 40 years. And yet nobody's ever actually found a cause for, for narcolepsy. And since um, antibodies to various neuronal proteins are now recognized to cause brain diseases, it would obviously be intriguing to think that autoantibodies in particular would cause narcolepsy. So that was my interest. And that's my interest in the debate, which was suggesting that one should be uh, treating patients with narcolepsy, probably from their first diagnosis, with immunotherapies, which would reduce autoimmunity. And the, we know that the most successful of these immuno immunotherapies are used in patients who have specific antibodies that cause their disease. So clearly, there was good reasons for thinking that narcolepsy is an autoimmune disease. It might be re responsive to immunotherapies. But the question is whether it should be considered autoimmune in the extent of there being some specific immune targeting of the cells that cause difficult, isn't it? It's a difficult one to describe because narcolepsy is caused by the very specific, as far as we know, loss of a population of cells in the hypothalamus. And because it's so specific, one assumes that the immune system to cause it is going to cause a very specific loss of those cells. Now, to be honest, if you look at the data on autoimmunity of the brain, the only way of causing a very specific cell loss would be T cells. Because antibodies don't normally cause loss of every cell. They're just not that good. And they would also, most of the antibodies that we know about would cause lots of different effects throughout the brain, not just narcolepsy. So this very specific disease should be caused by T cells in my view. The trouble is, and this is the point I tried to make at the end of my presentation, is, well, A, we haven't found any specific antibodies that can be helpful um, in general in diagnosing narcolepsy and in diagnosing cases that might respond to immunotherapy. But also, nobody has really identified T cells that are definitely responsible for the disease. And moreover, I also have been running for, was running for quite a considerable number of years, probably about 10 years, the assay, the test for loss of hypocretin in the cerebral spinal fluid, which is the hallmark of the disease. And if you've lost the hypocretin in your cerebral spinal fluid, then that probably means you've already lost your hypocretin secreting cells. So probably the damage has been and gone and it's too late to treat the patient. At the end of my talk, what I felt I had, I hoped to convince the audience was that there were no consistent antibodies present in these patients. The hypercretin cells had already been lost. And if there was a T cell mediated disease, it was probably too late to treat the patients. And therefore I was against the proposal to give these patients almost routinely immunotherapy. Because I did mention this recent paper that we've had published in Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery and Psychiatry, in which we had rather surprisingly, but perhaps not so surprisingly, found some antibodies in some of the patients with narcolepsy. So 
a number of years ago, a multi-centre study on narcolepsy in children found that a proportion of the children had active movement disorders. And those active movement disorders mean that they had things like twitching of their mouth, um, funny movements, you know, any all sorts of odd movements, which are not normally associated with narcolepsy, which, of course, is somnolence and cataplexy, which is a sort of loss of movement. These patients had loss of movement, but they also had these twitchy movements, oral facial um, dyskinesias, for instance. And they had been recognized during the videos which the um, doctors were using to diagnose the cataplexy. So they had also noticed these facial movements and these funny twitches, et cetera. And the patients that were studied in Bologna, there were 59 of them, and a number of them had these movement disorders. And among those movement disorders, there were eight who had antibodies to specific antigens, proteins in, in the brain. And those <coughs> of the um, six of those were children and, and had these active movement disorders. And four of those children had NMDA receptor antibodies. And the NMDA receptor is now the most um, well-known target for antibodies in the brain of patients with an autoimmune form of encephalitis that responds to immunotherapies. So yes, it's just possible that if you caught children early enough and they had these NMDA receptor antibodies, treatment might have some effect. But I suspect it would only affect the movement disorders and probably wouldn't affect their narcolepsy because they had reduced hypocretin levels in most cases. So they are likely to benefit even then, unfortunately. 